Hi, Nick Davis here again, and this time we're going to have a brief look at the common law position regarding what is known as reasonable force, and this basically works alongside Section 3 of the Criminal Law Act 1967, which we covered in a previous video. Now, whilst Section 3 1 is known as the statute defence, which means that it comes from an Act of Parliament, in other words, it's been passed as a law by the UK Parliament at Westminster, the common law right to use reasonable force is sometimes known as the private defence, as we shall soon see. So how does this law of self-defence work? Well, as we've seen previously, you may use force to prevent or terminate a crime under Section 3, brackets 1, of the Criminal Law Act 1967. And if you haven't seen the previous video on Section 3, 1, then I strongly recommend you view that in conjunction with this one in order that you can understand what the statute defence regarding reasonable force in this circumstance means. However, you may also use reasonable force under common law in the following circumstances. To prevent or terminate the unlawful detention of yourself or another. So this effectively means that if someone was detaining you or another person against you, your or their will, and it was unlawful, i.e. contrary to the law, then you could use force to either prevent that detention or terminate it. So for example, if someone was blocking you in order to prevent you from leaving a location, it was against your will, you could use force to push them out of the way and leave so long as it was reasonable in the circumstances. To prevent or terminate a breach of the peace, as defined by R.V. Howell 1982. And you can also use reasonable force to prevent or terminate a breach of the peace, which is seen as the right and duty of every citizen. Now I don't intend to go into much detail as to what a breach of the peace is here, and it will probably be a subject I'll be covering in a future video. But essentially the peace is seen as being a normal state of society, which we all have a right to enjoy. It's something known as the Queen's Peace in this respect. So according to case law laid down by R.V. Howell in 1982, a breach of the peace occurs when harm is actually done or likely to be done to a person or in his presence to his property or a person is in fear of being so harmed. So if a breach of the peace is likely to occur, citizens, including police officers, can use reasonable force to assist in preventing or terminating that breach of the peace and in practice it tends to be police officers who exercise this power usually when arresting to prevent a breach of the peace. Now the final circumstance where force can be used is to protect yourself or another from unlawful force or personal harm or to protect property and this is what is often known as the private defence as we said before. So if there is a threat to you or another have been exposed to unlawful force or personal harm or there is a need to protect property so long as the force is reasonable it can be used in these circumstances. So in effect you can use force to defend yourself, another or property from unlawful violence under common law. Now as I stated in a previous video this effectively leads to an overlap between the Criminal Law Act and Common Law so what tends to happen where this overlap exists is that the court considers the statutory right or defence in the first instance. And this is essentially because the statutory defence is broader in its scope in so much that it is used in the prevention of crime. So in other words, if you happen to have used force to prevent a person assaulting another, which in most cases is a crime, then it's the criminal law defence, or sorry, the criminal law act defence that the court will look at first, even though you can use force to defend another under common law. Now, if the statute of defence does not then apply, then it is common law that is used as a defence in a situation where force is used and where an offence cannot be committed. Now, for instance, we're talking here violence used by a child who is what is known as doli incapax or under the age of criminal responsibility or against a person who is insane, which is legal terminology used for somebody with mental health issues and uh, therefore lacks capacity as a result of those mental health issues and who can therefore also not commit an offence. So this effectively covers everything else where it's reasonable to use force in order to defend against unlawful force, even though from a technical point of view the aggressor cannot commit a crime. Now if we didn't have this right, then it would mean that we couldn't defend ourselves against someone who can't commit a crime, such as common assault, um, because of their capacity even though the force they use would otherwise be classified as contrary to the law, in other words, common assault. This would of course be majorly problematic, so this is why the private defence still exists, to effectively cover anything where force is necessary but is not covered by 3 brackets 1 of the Criminal Law Act 1967. 
Now remember, as with all UK law relating to the use of reasonable force, force is only lawful if it can be demonstrated it was reasonable. So in this respect, if you do have to use force, you need to ensure that you understand what reasonable means. Now if you'd like to find out more about this, and I strongly recommend that you do, then check out the free video series I created which explains what reasonable actually means, and you'll find a link to this coming up very soon. Once again, I'd like to say thank you very much for listening, and I'll see you in the next video.